So let's look at the gravitational potential energy of a hanging rope. So I've drawn the rope here in yellow, hanging over a couple of pulleys. The pulley here is at point zero, and this pulley here is at point L. And we've said that the rope hangs in a particular arc, such that it minimises the gravitational potential energy. And we know the gravitational potential energy is given by mgh. But we need to define an equation which defines the gravitational potential energy of this hanging rope. Now we're going to do use calculus in order to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to split the rope into uh, infinitesimal little sections. So in effect, what we do is we linearize the problem. We imagine the rope is built in up of an infinite number of tiny straight lines. So how are we going to do that? So if we were to imagine we took some small segment of rope there in pink, then what we could do is we could pretend that the rope, instead of being curved at that point there, is actually straight. Now obviously, if we were to take this length here, which is the height, and this length here, so that's the y-axis and that's the x-axis, then we could use Pythagoras' theorem and we could say that this y squared plus x squared would be equal to this distance here. So let's say that distance is called s, so that would be s squared. Now, if we were to look at this in terms of infinitesimals, if we were to allow this distance here to tend towards, this length here of this arc to tend towards uh, a, an extremely small value, I mean an infinitesimal value, then as the limit as this length here tends towards zero, the arc will tend towards a straight line. So in effect, in the limit, the arc will become a straight line. Now that's similar to saying something along the lines of, if we had a number, say, 0.99, we know that that is 0.01 away from 1. But if we were to look at the number 0.99999, then it's much closer to 1, but it's not quite equal to it. But if we were to say 0.99 and all the 9s head off towards infinity, then the number that we would get would be 1. So 0.99 with off heading off to infinity is the same as the number 1. So in essence, that's what we're doing here. We're saying that if we were to look at this in finer, finer detail, in fact, if we were to head off into an infinite detail in this, then we could say that the arc here would actually become a straight line. So that's in effect what we're doing whenever we're doing the differential calculus. We're splitting this rope into an infinite number of infinitesimally small segments. And those infinitesimally small segments and the limit will become little straight lines. So we're kind of linearizing this system. So let's go ahead now and we'll do this Pythagoras theorem, but we'll do it with the infinitesimal values and we'll see that on the next slide. So let's imagine that the rope that we had was weighed 100 kilograms. So we took the entire length of the rope and we weighed it and it was 100 kilograms. And let's say we, we measured the entire length of the rope and the length of the rope was 10 meters. So we could say that small m here would equal the large m upon l. So what we're saying is that if we were to measure the mass of the rope and it would be 100 kilograms and divide it by the length of rope which is 10 meters then this rope would weigh 10 kilograms for every meter. So that small m is the 10 kilograms per meter. So the small m, m is the mass per unit length. So let's say for example we were looking to find out the mass of a rope which is length 0.1 meters. Then in order to find that, we take the 0.1 meters and multiply it by the mass per unit length. So the mass per unit length times the, the, the length will just give us the final mass. So that'll be 100 upon 10, which is 10 times 0.1, which would be one kilogram. So a 0.1 meter length rope would weigh one kilogram. So granted that would be a, 
a rather heavy rope. But if we were to then write this out, we could say the mass of the rope is going to equal the mass per unit length times the length of the rope. Now we could do that in terms of the infinitesimal distances. So what we have here is the Pythagoras triangle. Again, this length here represents a small segment of the rope. And because we've got infinitesimal distances here, the curve for the rope will tend in the limit towards a straight line. So we can say then from Pythagoras that we could find our ds squared would equal our dx squared plus our dy squared. Now we can also look at this here. Instead of the m, we could put in a small element of our rope, dm. Instead of the s here, which is this distance, we could put in a small distance, an infinitesimal distance, ds. So we could say that the the mass of a small element dm is a mass per unit length times the length of the small element ds. So this here is just exactly the same as what we have here and the same as this example, but it's done in terms of infinitesimal distances. So we can take this here and we can use this in order to find the potential energy of the hanging rope. So what we could do is we could say that this value here ds and we want to relate this value ds back to our dx and our dy so we can say our ds squared is equal to dx squared plus dy squared now we want to relate them back to dx and dy because our final function that we want to uh, work out for the hanging rope is going to be the form y equals some function of x so we have to get it back in terms of this length and this length so we could say that our ds squared equals dx squared plus dy squared. Now we can divide this throughout by dx squared. So when we divide that throughout by dx squared, we get our uh, dx squared comes down here and this becomes our value of one. That becomes dy squared upon dx squared. Now we could have done it around the other way. You could have divided throughout by dy squared if you want and you could go ahead and try that yourself and see where you, you, you go with it. So we can see here, we've got this equation here. So what we can do is we can take the square root of uh, both sides. So we just have our ds by dx is equal to the square root of 1 plus uh, dy squared by dx squared. And then we could multiply throughout by our dx. So we'll have our ds would equal. Now I'll rewrite this in a different uh, nomenclature. Rather than having our dy by dx, we'll just write that as y derivative. And it's a y derivative squared. Also the square root there is the same as multiplying uh, this to the power of a half. So we can write this ds equals 1 plus y derivative squared to the power of half times dx. So think about what we're doing here. We're saying that this ds here, which is this infinitesimal distance, and we're relating this infinitesimal distance to our values here of our dx and dy. And we've got this equation here. And it's related to it via the derivative of the function that's y derivative squared so take your time and think about that and think about what it's telling you so now what we can do is we've got our value for our ds here which is this here so we just put this back into that equation so we're just going to end up with our dm which is our small element of mass will be our mass per unit length times the one plus y derivative squared to the power of half times dx so that tells us the mass of one small infinitesimal element of that rope. Now, as I said before, what we did here was we used the differential calculus in order to split this into an infinitesimal number of small elements. Having done that, we worked through some algebra. So we did the algebra on one infinitesimal element. And having got it in the format that we want, what we want to be able to do now is work out the entire value for the potential energy. Now, in order to work out the entire value for the potential energy, we're going to have to add up the entire mass. So in order to add up the value for the entire mass, we're going to have to integrate it. So we use differential calculus, and then we use uh, algebra, and then we use integral calculus to get it back to our final answer. So we can say that the 
potential energy is going to be the integral from 0 to L over, well, it's mass, gravity, and height. So the mass is given by this thing here. So that's our mass. The gravity is just given by our value of G. Now, what about the height? Well, if we go back up to the original drawing here, the height here is just be given by some function, y of x. So the height here is just y is some function of x. So we'll simply have that y is a function of x all by dx. So this entire equation here gives us the gravitational potential energy of a hanging rope. Now, we'll simplify that a little bit because we can see that the total mass is a fixed value, the total length is a fixed value, g is a fixed value, so we can just take them out as constants and we can just leave them out for the moment. So we'd finally be left with the potential energy of a hanging rope is the integral from 0 to L of 1 plus y derivative squared to the power of a half, all times a function at y of x, all by dx. So this is the final equation that we're looking for here, and this is the equation that we're going to use over the next few videos in order to introduce the ideas of calculus of variations. So thank you for listening. I'll get you in the next video. Goodbye.